Reynard Sinaga is the most prolific convicted rapist in UK criminal history, with him estimated to have raped and sexually assaulted at least 200 men between 2015 and 2017. Sinaga would stalk the streets of Manchester, UK, looking for victims who would lure into his property and then assault them, with him filming his sickening crimes. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Reynard Sinaga was born on the 19th of February 1983 in Jombi, on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. He was from a privileged upbringing, with his father being involved in banking. The family were wealthy, and Sinaga grew up not wanting for anything. Sinaga was raised Catholic, and appears to have hidden the fact that he was gay from his parents, who wanted him to marry a woman and settle down and start a family. After completing a degree in architecture at the University of Indonesia in 2006, Sinaga moved to the UK in 2007 to begin to study for a master's degree in planning at the University of Manchester, which he completed in 2009, followed by him studying for a master of arts in sociology, which he achieved in 2011. He then remained living in Manchester, and in 2012 he began to study for his doctorate degree in human geography, with him working on his thesis at the time of his arrest in 2017. During his time in the UK, Sinago lived openly as a gay man and was sexually promiscuous. He would, however, change completely when his parents came to visit or when he would return home to Indonesia, with them apparently having no idea of his sexual orientation until his trial. Sinago's base for his attacks was a flat in Prince's Street, Manchester, right in the heart of the city and at the centre of the nightlife. His road was somewhere that people staggering home from a night out would pass by. People who met Sinaga saw an unassuming, 5'7", bespectacled, thin man. His social media presence showed the face he wished to portray to others. There were people who identified issues with him, which we'll return to later, but everyone who knew him was shocked by the monster he truly was. This would only be revealed in 2017, when his rampage was finally brought to an end by the police. In order to outline the horror in this case, it's necessary to start at the end and see how the offences of Sinaga came to light, which began with one phone call to the police on the 2nd of June 2017. On this date, the police received a phone call from a 21-year-old rugby player who stated that Sinaga had tried to rape him. This man said that he'd been on his way home from a night out when Sinaga had ushered him into his property. In his intoxicated state, the man agreed. Sinaga then tried to drug this man and was trying to rape him when he woke up and he managed to fight him off. Sinaga was no match for a rugby player and, to put it mildly, he had the shit kicked out of him. The police attended and found Sonaga barely conscious on the floor and initially they arrested the rugby player for causing grievous bodily harm but they were suspicious of Sonaga and accompanied him to the hospital where he was chained to the bed. They seized his mobile phone from the property and demanded the PIN number from him. Sonaga initially gave the wrong PIN number but eventually gave the right one and the police officers were confronted with the video of Sonaga attacking the rugby player which showed... Unfortunately, this individual had already been raped before he came to. Sonaga was arrested in the hospital bed for a single count of rape, but this was just the tip of the iceberg. Police returned to Sonaga's property and recovered dozens of phones, driving licenses, student IDs, wallets, watches and Facebook screen grabs of men. All of these men were those that Sonaga had raped and these were his trophies of his crimes. The true horror, though, was found on the phone the police had taken initially, and on this phone was hundreds of hours of Sinaga raping and sexually assaulting men. Sinaga angrily raped almost all of his victims, and would ejaculate both inside them and on their bodies. He used a condom during only one of his attacks, and, by some miracle, is not known to have infected any of his victims. This is based on the fact that he tested negative for all sexually transmitted diseases, upon his arrest. This of course doesn't discount that he previously had an STD, 
and then got it treated. He would also kiss his victims' bodies and on their mouths. Most of his victims were raped repeatedly over a number of hours. I feel sorry for the police officers who had to watch each and every one of these sickening videos. CCTV analysis and inquiries show Sinago's modus operandi, with him leaving his property late at night and trawling the local streets looking for lone, intoxicated men who he then manipulated into coming back to his flat. This was by a number of ways, including giving them a safe space to sleep off their intoxication, ordering a taxi, or inviting them back to his flat for more drinks. Unfortunately, when we're drunk, we make bad decisions, and in this state, it may have seemed like a good idea to go with this unassuming, physically slight man, for whatever reasons. This CCTV footage shows Sunaga going on the prowl for a victim. When they got into the flat, Sonaga would offer them a drink, spiked with the drug gamma hydroxybutyric acid, more commonly known as GHB. GHB is a drug actually used to treat sleep disorders and anxiety, and it acts by relaxing the nervous system. However, in large enough doses, it can cause unconsciousness, confusion, and memory loss. When the men were unconscious, Sonaga would rape them filming his sickening crimes, clearly for his own sexual gratification at a later date. Police inquiries established that the first attack they could prove was on New Year's Day 2015, when a man was out for a night out, and the next thing he remembered was coming to, covered in vomit in Sonaga's flat, with no idea how he got there. Sonaga feigned concern and gave some story about this victim being too drunk to get home and he gave him a place to stay. The victim actually apologised to Sonaga and went on his way, not knowing until two years later that he had been raped. Sonaga is thought to have prowled the streets most nights and committed several rapes per month. The police had the heartbreaking task of informing the victims of his offences. Using Sonaga's trophies and the content of the videos, they were able to identify 48 victims who they had to contact individually and inform them that they had been raped. Almost all of them had no idea that anything had happened to them and the bottom of their world must have dropped out. However, at least 60 victims could not be identified. Forensic analysis and detailed police work led to Sonaga being suspected of raping at least 206 men 
between January 2015 and his arrest in 2017. Let that number sink in. At least 206 men raped by this man in a two and a half year period. Sonaga's method did not change and he simply gave some sort of excuse when these people woke up to explain their presence in his flat with him knowing full well they couldn't actually remember the true horror of their experience. Some people may be questioning why no one reported his behaviour to the police or suspected they had been raped. The unfortunate truth is that I believe that some of them probably did suspect they had been raped but there's such a stigma about male sexual assault that they probably felt so ashamed, so violated and so dirty that they didn't want to admit to themselves or others what had happened. However, as will be illustrated later, a lot of his victims showed extraordinary bravery later on in court. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Sonaga pleaded not guilty to all charges, and there were four trials. Between the 1st of June 2018 and the 10th of July 2018, for crimes against 13 victims. Between the 1st of April 2019 and the 7th of May 2019, for crimes against 12 victims. Between the 16th of September 2019 and the 4th of October 2019, related to 10 victims. And finally, in December 2019, for offences related to a further 13 victims. The callousness of Sanag was fully on display through each and every one of these hearings. He forced his victims to have to relive their ordeals, and the videos of the attacks were played in court. Sanaga appeared to be enjoying the trials, smirking throughout, and taking great pleasure in watching the videos of his attacks. The bravery of the victims has to be noted, as many of them testified in court and refused to do so behind screens, with them wishing to look Sanaga directly in the eyes. Other elements of Sanaga's depravity were fully exposed, including him sending friend requests to many of his victims on Facebook after the attacks and the meticulous way that he collected trophies and documented his crimes. Sanaga would also boast to his friends about his sexual exploits, subtly admitting his crimes, with him saying that he would use a, quote, secret potion when having sex with men. Sanaga's defence was pathetic, with him claiming that all of his victims were consensual sexual partners, despite almost all of them being heterosexual and them obviously being unconscious in the videos. Some of the victims were heard snoring in the clips that were shown to the court. To no one's surprise, Sanaga was found guilty in all four trials and was eventually convicted of crimes against 48 victims, including 136 counts of rape, 14 counts of sexual assault, 8 counts of attempted rape, and 1 count of assault by penetration. Sinaga was sentenced at the conclusion of each trial, but I want to focus on the sentence from his last trial in December 2019, which occurred on January the 6th, 2020, in front of Judge Suzanne Goddard, KC. She stated, quote, You are a man of some intelligence and cunning, who has tried to counter each and every twist in the prosecution case as you gave evidence, hopeless though your efforts were. You showed no shame or remorse as the jury had to view hours of the most intimate footage. Your actions show you are a dangerous, deeply disturbed and perverted individual with no sense of reality. You described yourself as having behaved tenderly to the males who fell into your clutches. Nothing could be further from the truth. All of your actions were cold and calculated to avoid the males waking up during sex. You persisted in your denials of guilt in spite of the overwhelming nature of the evidence against you and the previous jury verdicts. You gave no thought to the deep distress and lasting psychological damage you will have caused these young men. Reference was also made to a probation pre sentence report where the author wrote, quote, I am unable to conclude that Mr. Sonaga is anything other than extremely dangerous. His level of denial and the additional trials that are pending make it unlikely that the prison or probation service will make any progress with him in the foreseeable future. The judge then sentenced him. 
Reynald Sonaga was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of 30 years in prison before he's able to apply for parole. This was then increased to 40 years at the Court of Appeal on the 11th of December 2020. This means Sonaga's earliest release date is 2060, when he'll be 77 years of age. Given the level of danger he poses and his remorselessness, I think there's a strong likelihood that this man will spend the rest of his life behind bars. One of the senior police officers who led the investigation described Sonaga as, quote, a psychopath, and added, quote, had he not been a narcissist and a psychopath, anyone else faced with such damning evidence would have admitted to what they've done. I would agree with this wholeheartedly, and there are elements of Sonaga's personality noted by friends which give an idea of the sort of man he was. He was deeply self-absorbed, obsessed with his own physical appearance and his importance to the world in general. One of his former housemates claimed that they actually had an argument with Sonaga because he was convinced that if he died, all life would come to an end. He couldn't seem to imagine the world continuing without him due to how important he was. He was an extreme narcissist. I believe that Sonaga is a man without any conscience or any remorse. Everyone in the world is there for him, and he can use and abuse as much as he wants. I think that he sees no problem with raping these men, they were there for his pleasure and their level of consent and the horrific emotional and psychological harm his actions caused was secondary to him getting his needs met. Potentially his self-entitled attitudes and beliefs stem from his privileged upbringing. Sinaga primarily targeted heterosexual men and I think this gave him a thrill but also enabled him to further degrade them with him believing that these straight males would be especially traumatised if they found out they were raped by a man. I think that Sonaga pleaded not guilty in order to be the centre of attention and to relive his crimes over and over again. This man is an absolute monster. Police believe that Sonaga began sexually assaulting men as far back as 2005, when he was in Indonesia, and I have little doubt that the 206 victims he created in the UK is likely just a small proportion of the true number of people he violated in both countries. It is possible that Reynard Sonaga is the most prolific rapist not only in the UK, but potentially in the world. Hopefully he will never be released. So, what are your thoughts on this case? Do you think, like me, there were likely issues in Indonesia and this was somehow linked to him coming to the UK? Do you think his family's money may have swept accusations under the carpet in his native country? This is a distressing case, so please take time to do something to de-stress and recenter yourself. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.